Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Thursday, June 18th, and it's 2.06 p.m. And I have prayed that the Lord would let His Holy Spirit help me to pull this together to where uh, I make sense. <laughs> okay. Um... It's about the the last shooting that took place at the Atlanta Wendy's where the 27-year-old man had fallen asleep behind the wheel. They the police officer got him to move his car over and I did a video on it and there were a few comments Okay, well, here's what I was thinking. Uh, my friend had um, texted me something about how the police need more training, especially for situations like this that need de-escalated and not escalated, and that we need to be in prayer for our police officers, and we do. It's like, first, the um, chief of police, she just quit, resigned, after, what, 20 years or something? I mean, that's a huge police department, all right? And if we get police officers resigning, quitting, being fired, and you know what's going to happen. National Guard will take over. It'll have to be some sort of policing. You know the New World Order would love that. Well, here's what my thought was. Also, have you ever heard the expression, a tit for a tat? I'm sure you have. I even pulled it up. All right. A tit for a tat. Um... This, they gave sentence examples for a tit for a tat on this particular website. An action, it's an idiom, and it's an action done to revenge against the person who has done something wrong to you. All right? An example, a couple examples they used is, now, this is from the Huffington Post, okay? God is far too complicated to want a tit for a tat. I thought that was kind of a strange use of an example for that. Um, yeah, we hurt him when we sin. So, you know, he doesn't knock us over with a bolt of lightning every time we do. He's very merciful and gives us plenty of time to repent. Okay, so we'll leave that one alone at that. Fox News is raising the possibility of Russia expelling some U.S. diplomats in a tit-for-tat, <coughs> excuse me, retaliation. This is, their, this is another example of how it's used. Fox News is raising the possibility of Russia expelling some U.S. diplomats, in other words, kicking them out of their country, in a tit-for-tat retaliation, but they just seem to like saying the phrase tit-for-tat rather than having any real insight. Okay, well, does this remind you of anything from the Word of God? All right. Back in the Old Testament, when God was giving Moses the laws, this is what he said for them to do. It's the same thing as a tit for tat. Leviticus 24, verse 19. If a man injures his neighbor just as he has done, 
so it shall be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, just as he has injured a man, so it shall be inflicted on him. Thus the one who kills an animal shall make it good, but the one who kills a man shall be put to death. Okay, I'll just read just the last one. This is verse 22. There shall be one standard for you. It shall be for the stranger as well as the native, for I am the Lord your God. This was a law. Still want to live by the law? Okay, whoever is guilty of breaking one law is guilty of breaking them all. Okay, so that's just a little sidebar. Free charge. All right. Now, what did Jesus have to say about it? I found this on Wikipedia. So the first part, Take it with a grain of salt. Turning the other cheek is a phrase in Christian doctrine from the Sermon on the Mount that refers to responding to injury without revenge and allowing more injury. This passage is variously interpreted as commanding non-resistance. Christian passivism or nonviolence on the part of the victim. It has also been interpreted as a way to embarrass a bully. Hmm. That just struck me as different than when I first read it. A way to embarrass a bully? Okay, we'll move on. Scriptural references. The phrase originates from the Sermon on the Mount in the New Testament in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. An alternative for, quote, an eye for an eye, unquote, which we just read about, is given by Jesus. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Now this is... English Standard Version. I think the King James says, if anyone takes your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. And that's Jesus Christ, his words. English Standard Version, Matthew 5, 38 through 42. All right. And then it goes on to give the Gospel of Luke in chapter 6. Love your enemies. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. And that was Jesus Christ's words, English Standard Version, 
Luke 6, 27 through 31. Now, my point of all of this was, we know we're in the end days and that evil is abounding. Lawlessness is increasing. And it is my fear that even though there is this faction being paid for by George Soros, we know that, people being bussed in from wherever he's getting them to throw pre-laid bricks at buildings. I don't know if that's still going on or not. But after all that these last few weeks of this going on, people being pent up for three months, being made to wear masks, which lowers their oxygen, increases carbon dioxide. It's not good for your health to wear it continually, especially if you work someplace where you have to have it on and you sneak down the hall or in the bathroom to get it off for five minutes. Jeez, I wouldn't know. That's what I'd have to do. I can't stand to wear it. Anyway, the point is, I imagine there are people who are just sitting at home still because now they have no job. What is it, a quarter of the country's unemployed? It's a lot. And they're watching the news. They're sitting in their easy chair watching the news about yet another black man getting shot by a white cop. Now, I don't know how many would react in such a way as I'm thinking. But I fear for the police that are decent. I that would never do that that would would have let him run and just ran after him called for backup not harassed him for 30 minutes until he blew up at him you know what I mean that that cop was in the wrong and deserves to be charged with murder because had he done it right from the very beginning got him out of his car and arrested him for public intoxication. He's in public. He's intoxicated. I know Atlanta's got that law. We have it here in Alabama. Surely they have it in, in Atlanta. He didn't have to get him for a DUI. Just get him where he's safe. And perhaps the man would have been so sedated from his drinking, there would have been no tussle, fighting, where he could get a hold of the taser? How come he got a hold of his taser? Anyway, I'm, I'm just saying, can, let's, can we just be in prayer for the police department? I know, our lists are long, are they not? By the way, I hear our sister Kim Mosley, who had to have thyroid surgery, she had to have her thyroid taken out, and they've put it off because of the COVID thing. Then she got chicken pox, of all the things. They had to put it off for that. She finally got over that, and they finally got her scheduled, and she's gotten it removed. She's home. And my last report on her from our sister Tricia was that she was doing well. Now I'm praying that she can get adjusted. She'll have to be put on some form of artificial thyroid medication. You know what your thyroid puts out to keep all the rest of your body going. It does a lot. Um... And if the levels aren't within a certain range, you can go wacky or you can just be like, I can't get out of bed, you know. So, let's pray for Kim. 
But I got, uh, that just came to my mind. So I guess the Holy Spirit wanted us to pray for her. Um, but let's keep our police departments in our own states. Let's put it that way. Uh, um, or in our country. Because I don't know if I have one in every state. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, one of you, that is, that would hear this. Um, our, the policemen need help. They need better training. They need... I don't know what all. They definitely need better training, but they need our prayers because some very good police officers could get shot in the back as a tit for tat, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Some people know that Old Testament better than they know the New. I don't know how that is, but I've heard people quote stuff from it. And they don't even realize Jesus changed a lot. <laughs> he changed most of it. <laughs> okay. Those old laws are not for us. But the point is. We don't just turn the other cheek. The man has to be held accountable. But nobody needs to take it on themselves. To go shoot another police officer. Because somebody was shot by a police officer and that's what I pray that will not happen that God will put angels around our policemen I know there are some bad ones we all know that but there are some good ones too and they don't deserve to be shot in the back and put more children fatherless okay I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and myself and my computer and over each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connections so hopefully we can stay connected until we're out of here and I sure am praying it's soon I can't wait to be with Jesus Did you see him? I couldn't tell. He was sound asleep. As soon as I turned his camera. <laughs> yeah, let's get another poke at you. Look at you. There he is. Look here. Say hi, Jasper. Say bye for now. We'll talk to you later. Okay, y'all. Bye-bye for now.